Ostrich jockey in India and lived with an Asian dancer named Tilda. She was oddly tall for an Asian woman and wore a patch over her left eye on the odd days of the week. On the even days, she would go to the local flea market and sell what she called magic beans and claimed that they mysteriously grew her missing eye back. She would then proudly lift the patch and reveal her proof. Stuck. Steps closing in. She made the you win to absolve her of her sins. Tilda, the Asian woman, always wore brightly colored clothes that she'd made from the paper mache that she'd stolen from a Chinese lantern maker three booths down at the flea market. Then one day, while she was on a ladder hanging a new "Grow Back Your Eye" sign on her booth, a group of nearsighted Mexican children out of school for the day, celebrating the birthday of El Centauro del Norte, mistook her for a piñata and beat her to death. After that day, I lost the will to speak, wore a paper bag over my head for the next 37 years. Something you should know. Please run on in when the howling wind echoes. When the bag was finally ripped off by an old bald man whose mouth had been sewn shut, I came face to face with my father, who was now a monk living in a monastery high in the Himalayas. I had discovered that my mother. And an odd but interesting fellow I remember only as Uncle Ted, my naked wrestling sensei, had dropped me there on their way to the top of Mount Kailash, considered to be a sacred place in five religions and home of giant carnivorous frogs, the so-called Golem of the Wetlands. Stronger than wind and smelling of cigars. Never heard from again, mother and Ted. I can't remember weeping over it, but I understand it is the tradition. So come inside, let's have a good cry. Hold on. Chill. 